here we go. It's a herd hierarchy. Herd hierarchy. Time is now. Let's go. The top 10 NFL teams according to college. Number 10. Like my wardrobe, the boring Colts. I think they're a playoff team. They're not there yet. I like them. First of all, they forced at least one turnover in 11 straight games. Nobody else in the league has done that. Carson Wentz has multiple touchdowns in six of his last seven games. Now, they do not play Tennessee well. They don't match up because the defensive front for the Titans gives the Wentz a lot of problems, and he gets reckless and forces turnovers. But they're 8-0, and Jonathan Taylor rushes for over 100 yards. I like this team. They're boring. The AFC South's best two teams are boring. They don't match up with Tennessee. I think they match up with everybody else. I think they're going to make the playoffs. They do the stuff I like. They run the ball. They're smart. they got a smart coach. Quarterback can make plays. They take the ball away. I like the Colts at 10. Number nine. Let's not go crazy on the Rams. This is the worst two-game stretch in Sean McVay's career. You got Von Miller making his first start. You got OBJ making his first start. You got Robert Woods not playing. And you got a division rival that plays physical football that you don't match up terribly well. But they still lead the NFL with 29 sacks. They're on a bye. This is a very explosive team. They need a bye for Von Miller. They need a bye for OBJ. Rams at nine. Number eight. Buccaneers. Again, here's an interesting little caveat. The Bucs are 5-0 and with Antonio Brown and 1-3 and without him. Brady has always been best when he has his security blankets. It's not just talent. He doesn't have Gronk, and he doesn't have A.B., and he's not the same. Brady is a creature of habit. He needs his guys. He needs the middle-of-the-field Gronk. and that, that. Why do you think he pushes so hard for Antonio Brown? He needs his speedy outside receiver. They're fine. They lead the NFL in passing yards. This is a dynamic offense. They're getting some of their players back. I think starting this week, they'll go on a little roll. Number seven. I don't know what to do with the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray's out for two weeks. He's probably out again. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. We know they're good. But I don't know what you want me to say about Arizona right now. They're just missing too many people. They're missing Kyler Murray. I can't put him top five because I don't know when he's going to play again. I am worried that he got hurt last year, and he's hurt this year. And the quarterbacks in this league, Russell Wilson doesn't get hurt much, right? It's like Brady doesn't get hurt much. A lot of these quarterbacks, there's a reason some guys do get hurt more and some guys avoid the contacts. Eli Manning was never hurt. Mahomes stays upright. I worry a little bit about the Kyler injury bug. Number six. Kansas City, maybe I've got them undervalued, but they do have 20 giveaways. Only the Jets have more. I thought finally against the Raiders, they threw to backs, they threw to tight ends, they simplified it, not as many big over-the-top throws. I thought they got a little boring, they got more patient, they're getting healthier on the defensive front. We I, we said this, Steve Spagnola, Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, smart guys, generally figured out, it took them about eight weeks, they're back in the Super Bowl bubble. Number five. I may be overvaluing New England here, but I'll say this. They have 140-plus rushing yards in four straight games. I was on Boston Radio last week, and they were lamenting their offensive line. And I said, have you watched the league? It could be the third best in the league. Uh, Ask Cleveland. So I think they're checking all the boxes. I do not believe they can go on the road yet and beat an Aaron Rodgers or, or beat an elite quarterback of Mahomes or a Josh Allen. But they check so many boxes. It is classic New England. They're more efficient, less penalized. Don't turn it over. You get no freebies out of respect to the culture and the way they're playing. I've got them at five. Number four. I think Buffalo's probably the best team in the league. The stats tell you that. But they've had a couple of ugly losses. Their offensive line can be inconsistent. But they lead the NFL in yards differential, point differential, and takeaways. I said there's a Mike Tyson quality. If they smell blood, they will knock you out. If they smell weakness, if they smell vulnerability, nobody knocks you out faster than Buffalo. They have a not. There's no Larry Holmes here. This is all Tyson and George Foreman. They'll knock you out. But they get off their game. Sometimes you can bully them up front. Jacksonville and Pittsburgh's defensive front pushed them backwards. Josh Allen starts rushing stuff. I think they're the most talented team in the league. I got them at four, but I could have them won by next week. Number three. Green Bay finally can win beyond being pretty. For the first time in recent memory, 
Since the year they won the Super Bowl, they can play bully ball. They can run it. They can push you around. I think their defense is the best they've had since the Super Bowl year. They're doing it without Jair Alexander. I think their defense is really good. I think they've drafted the heck out of safety. they got great safeties. They've got great corners. Uh, they're banged up at linebacker. Their defensive front gets a pretty decent pass rush. I don't think it's about Aaron Rodgers this year. I think it's about A.J. Dillon, the running back, gives them a power component at running back. And I think their defense is wildly underrated. Packers at three. Number two. Dallas, uh, there's a stat that matters in Vegas. NFL, the leader in yards per play in the NFL today is the Dallas Cowboys. Vegas loves that. 6.3 yards a play. What does that mean? They're explosive. They don't rely, although they can give you a 12-play drive, they can go over the top and beat you in two. They've got multiple players in multiple units that are playmakers. CeeDee Lamb receiver, Micah Parsons, Randy Gregory, Zeke, Dak, Amari Cooper, Trayvon Diggs. they got playmakers everywhere, can beat you multiple ways. Number one. I don't know if they're the best team, but they've beaten the most good team, so Tennessee is number one. Um, they've out been outgained the last two weeks without Derrick Henry, so they're not a dominant one. When you get outgained, it usually comes back to haunt you. But they're 7 0 against teams that made the playoffs. Uh, they could have lost to Buffalo. They found a way to win. They bullied the Rams. So, out of respect, I think they're well coached. They're physical. They get after it. And we know, you and I know this, once Thanksgiving comes around, this league becomes more physical. It happens every year. The pretty teams win in September. The tough teams win in November and December and January. There's the herd hierarchy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.